Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we are here to talk about some beauty industry lies, particularly in the beauty industry marketing, things that I can see through and I just wanted you guys to be aware of them. We're going to chat about those while I do my makeup, just my everyday regular makeup I can talk through about the products that I'm using and enjoying as well so yeah if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe to my channel I am a makeup artist of over nine years and I do makeup content we do some travel makeup crossovers where I go and try out makeup in different uh, cities and countries and do a little come and shop along with me I love doing those videos and yeah some tutorials and some informative videos like this as well so please consider subscribe and let's get started with the lies that we have on my skin is my sunscreen this is the skin 1004 this is the Madagascar Centella Hydra Seeker water fit sun serum SPF 50 that's a long name but that's the name and yeah I already put that on about 10 or 15 minutes ago while I was setting up my cameras and things um, so that's all sunken in and done its thing which is perfect then for my base um, I'm not doing anything particularly interesting today um, but I'm just going to pop on this is the ultraviolet another SPF but I still like to double up because I don't put a thick layer of this this is the ultraviolet dream screen dr daydream screen tinted veil it's gorgeous and I'm trying to use this up because I know it won't work for me in a few weeks when we get into the winter months because it is like a little bit of a deeper color but I like that because it matches with the rest of my body and for me we just apply with fingers because that is the lazy girl way and um, it just works so should we get into the first industry lie so the first lie that we can talk about today is the words on our packaging of the products called dermatologist tested. What does that mean? Does it mean that the dermatologist that tested it liked the product? Absolutely not. It does not mean that. It just means that a dermatologist tested the product, which they're allowed to say that, right? That, that's what they did. They tested the product. But unfortunately, it, it makes people, it makes the consumer think that it has these words, dermatologist tested, that it means it's their stamp of approval, it's their blue tick. But in actual fact, it's not a blue tick at all. It just means that the derm a dermatologist has tested the product, trialed it, and it doesn't have anything to do with the type of feedback that they that they they gave the brand on the product. So kind of disregard that information. Don't really look at it as something as a reason as to why you should completely purchase that product or not. Go based on other factors, not on the fact that it says dermatologist tested. If it says something else like, you know, dermatologist approved or dermatologist, you know, voted or something like this, that's different. But most things, they say dermatologist tested. And that just means that it was tested by a dermatologist. I know. Shocking. But when you think about it, it is really what it just says. So I just did my brows very quickly. I used a little small mini of the Benefit Cosmetics Precisely My Brow Pencil. This is in the shade 3.5. You know how much I love my Benefit brow products. I just feel like it's the perfect color for blonde brows. So this is just my everyday makeup. I haven't prepped my makeup bag different in any way, shape or form to film this video. I just thought let's do my makeup and we can run through these lies. I was just gonna sit down and talk and do them but I was like why not do my makeup at the same time. So we're going in with a little bit of the infamous NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in the shade Vanilla 2. And I pop that under my eyes, around my nose and on my chin that always and gets a little spotty. While my concealer is kind of like drying down a little bit, I'm going to bronze up my face. This is a powder from Sephora in shade 55 Cacao. It's a nice warm bronzing shade, works well for me. 
you put that on the outskirts of the face. Now another lie, the second lie that I want to talk to you about today is about natural is better. The theory and the thought behind that if something is coming from nature and the ingredient is natural and non-toxic, that's another whole thing, that it's better for you. That's not true. That's, that's really not, not the case. The thing that everyone likes to quote is that poison ivy is natural. Is that good for us to put on our skin? Absolutely not. Not good for the skin at all. There are things in nature that aren't good for the skin. Obviously skincare brands are not going to bottle poison ivy and put that in your serum, but hey, there's, there's a lot of wacky stuff out there, so I wouldn't put it past them to find some benefits inside poison ivy and they extract the poison part and use the other part. I'm sure they would do something like that. Natural products aren't always better. I'm just now patting in my concealer with my finger because that's how I roll. Where natural skincare has an issue for a lot of people and they don't realize it, unfortunately, and it's the people that have sensitized skin, sensitive, inflamed skin, the barrier is broken, things are not balanced and nice. And so a lot of people fall down this trap. They found some brand, they read some blog where they said, you know, stop using all the synthetics and chemical products on your skin and your skin will be better the sensitivity will go down but a lot of these natural products that people are using and trying to heal their skin have essential oils in them now essential oils smell beautiful they are botanics they are so nice for you know room scents uh, fragrances but on the skin and particularly on skin that is already sensitized and has issues it's a disaster. It's not going to soothe your skin. It's going to inflame it and irritate it so much more. That's where my big issue with a lot of natural brands is, is people go to them for healing, heal their skin. But in actual fact, it does a little bit of the opposite. So it's just a real shame that yeah, people fall down that rabbit hole. So if you do have inflamed skin and sensitive skin barriers and issues with your skin, go to lab made skincare skincare that is synthesized and it is safe is tested and it is going to be the same in each batch you know there's no discrepancies between the products it will just be able to heal it's designed to heal so brands like La Roche Posay then pharmaceutical looking brands that are just simple brands they're your ones that you want to do some recovery balms things like that will really heal your skin a lot better than some essential oil Product from nature. I'm going in with a Vizart eyeshadow palette. It comes like this. It is just so cute and little for traveling. I am using this shade here just on the brow bone just to create some depth on my eye. And this is really just my very simple everyday makeup getting ready. That's it, nothing special. The other side of the brush, that's a little bit more like a smudger and I'm gonna put some of that under my eyes. Okay, that will do. Shall we move on to lie number three? Lie number three is before and after photos from skincare companies, packaging and uh, websites. I'm gonna go in with my mascara and lash curler. I'm currently using the NARS Climax mascara and I'm enjoying it quite a lot. Very minimal smudging, but still smudging. I've never met a mascara that doesn't smudge on me, especially in the climate that we have here in Hong Kong. Before and after photos from skincare companies and why they could potentially be hugely fabricated and enhanced to make the results like what you can see here. A whole lot better than what it actually is so there's a few things that you need to look at when you're seeing these before and after photos and then that way you can determine whether you think that they are truthful or not one thing you need to look at when you're seeing these photos is the a lot often they're around the the eyes or, or close-ups of the face is you need to have a look at the angle of the person's face on the before and the after photo okay there is very easy ways that you can angle your face to make it look better 
in a before and after photo, okay? So for instance, if I go down like this, you can see more shadows, more bags, more things that we don't like to see, okay? I hope you can see that. You see that? But then, if I instantly just put my head up a little bit more, and then you take a photo, it looks better. The under eye looks better. You don't see that, that bag and that hollow. You go up. You can do it the same like this and like this. Okay, so have a look at the photo and see the angles of the face, the jaws, the eyes, where the eyes are looking, even if you look further down or further up, it changes the shape of how your eye and the skin sits within the orbital bone, which can really enhance the, the results of the said product or treatment. Now, another thing is, of course, lighting. Huge, huge difference between how someone's skin looks, the luminosity, the shadows, the so much onto someone's face. When you're looking at the before and after photos, see the lighting. Is the before photo, are they standing under lights that come down that create a lot of shadows on the face? Probably. And in the after photo, do they have a nice light like I have here, hitting the front of my face? Therefore, it removes all the shadows and, you know, little things that we don't like to enhance. Definitely take that into consideration when you're viewing these before and after photos. Another thing with the before and after photos that I like to think not many companies will do, but I think they do, is dehydrating the, the person's skin before compared to after. Not dehydrating, but making sure it's just freshly cleaned and really washed harshly and not putting any skincare on it before. Of course your skin is going to look dry and then when you put your skincare on, plump it up with some serums, it's going to be a huge difference before and after. So I really think that is a common practice with some skincare brands, specifically when they're just doing things about the skincare and serums. They may ask the models for the before and after photos to frown or smile more. And that makes a huge difference with how our lines show up on our face. I mean, this is a lot more noticeable if the person is smiling and frowning more or after in the photos. Take those things into consideration with before and after photos because there's many ways that they can make them look more dramatic results other than just, you know, Photoshop. And so just keep those things in mind when you're shopping and viewing the products you're looking to buy. Mascara is on. The lashes, lovely, just a very simple eye makeup look that I do for daytime. Now we should powder the face a little bit with my absolute favourite powder of the last few months. I have loved this powder so much. This is the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydro Powder. I have these little minis, perfect for your handbag. The powder is just so light. I'm sorry if the light's coming in and out. The sun is coming in and out. <laughs> it's not me. This, you know, really can tell when the powder is so light. I don't know if you can see, but when you like kind of tap the excess, it floats upwards. And that just, that's just how light this powder really is. So I like to just pop this under the eyes and around the T-zone area where I get a bit shiny. It just knocks back a lot of that glow and shine that I get. I think primarily from wearing sunscreen. So wear your sunscreen to be shiny. No need for highlighters. Line number four is products that can shrink your pores on your face. Skincare products that claim they can shrink pores. It is largely a huge myth that you can shrink your pores on your face. Pores are not doors. They don't open and close. They kind of stay the same, but there is products that can make them appear to be smaller, tighter, more cleaned looking, definitely products that can do that. You know, a lot of products, they can plump up the skin around the pores and therefore making them kind of look smaller. Or you could use products that really clean your pores and make them look nicer. There is primers, which definitely do temporarily help to smooth the appearance of the pores, not make them as noticeable, they mattify them, and they kind of fill them in a little bit like a brick wall and you put grout over it to smooth it out. That's kind of like what a primer does, a little bit. So definitely there's things like that, but your pores don't essentially change size and nor do you want to. That's what 
our skin is we need pores to be able to sweat and do its function as skin plus we would look really weird without pores you know whenever you see retouched photos of people the way they're just all the texture is essentially obliterated that's removing all the pores what if we walked around like that it's it's a bit it's too much we are human we all are individual and we have pores okay now i'm gonna go in with my very sad looking blusher that i have used all summer long this is the benefit cosmetics blush in shade sunny very very well loved but i just i just love the color up on the cheekbones going upwards to give a more lifted appearance to the face we don't want blush to be going down too low because that would just draw down the face too much isn't that just so pretty such a summery color the last and final lie of the beauty industry is men's skincare it's not necessary the only difference is the packaging and the marketing it's essentially the same inside you do not need a separate skincare if you're a male but if you want one by all means go for it but it's not needed men and women we all have skin it's the same thing you know some people say that men's skin is a little bit thicker which is true but it still doesn't mean that they can't use women's skincare I'm just going to line my lips I have like fallen in love with lip liner again over the last few months I really like what it does to my lips the only difference is the packaging and yes there is some women's skincare brands where I see why men wouldn't want to use it but there's no reason why they can't use it because it's pink or it has flowers or something like that it is nice that there is skincare brands out there for men to use if they do feel not right using you know a pink bottle of something but that's completely up to them and it is just the packaging because there's nothing there's no reason why you need a dedicated product for men's skin this is my go-to lip product for the last few months this is the by terry lip shine in shade 10 Blair Flirt. It is just so easy, shiny, balmy, not sticky. I don't particularly love the taste or the smell, it's a little bit cosmetic smelling. I love the colour, so easy to wear. Putting a lip liner underneath, and then this gloss, I just feel like it makes me look. I have bigger lips, lip filler without the lip filler. I love it. That's my makeup done. That was the last one. Uh, the only thing about men's skincare that is different is beards so if you're a man with a beard or a man you know has a beard they might need a few different products for beard maintenance like a beard oil or something to hydrate it and the only difference would be is the way they look after their skin is they need to be a little bit more careful and really cleanse inside the beard to get down to that skin look after the skin that is underneath the beard as well which you know i think a lot of men probably forget but it also, the beard, having the beard protects your skin. It protects it from the sun a little bit. It is a little bit of a, yeah, a protectant uh, for the men around the beard area. Men's skincare, it's not all that necessary and it's just a nice to have, but it's not, not needed at all. They can use regular skincare. So that was it. That was the five beauty industry lies that I wanted you to be aware of. Please comment down below if any of those were new to you and you've never heard of any of those. I hope you enjoyed seeing my absolute basic everyday makeup look that I do all the time. Generally I can do this in under 10 minutes. Super simple. That's how I do my makeup pretty much every day when I'm not going to any events or doing anything special. Please subscribe. Um, I would really love that and give it a thumbs up because it really helps the channel get seen more and my content get viewed more by lovely people like you. So I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Enjoy your day.